Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show that the polynomial px equal to x cubed minus 5x plus 3 has exactly 3 real roots. To do this, first of all, we not recognize that px is a polynomial, so we want to find a location of the roots. For this, we can refer to the text. Or zero of a polynomial, page 146 by David Brennan's text here. If px is a polynomial of degree n, where the leading coefficient is 1, where a0, a1, a2, an minus 1 are the coefficient of x power n minus 1, all the way down to the constant term, the real number, then the location of 0 or p, if there are any, lies in the open interval from minus m to m. Where is m here? m is a 1 plus maximum of the absolute value of all the a 0, a 1 to a n minus 1. So, in particular, we're going to find out where are the location of 0 now. So, by location of 0, so we could answer this way. By location of zero, okay, all the zero of px lies in all zero of px lies in the open interval from minus m to m, okay based on our result I just show you therefore what is m now? m is equal to 1 plus maximum of the absolute value of the coefficient if the lowest co living coefficient is 1 which we have here the coefficient are absolute value of minus 5 and absolute value of 3 so we're going to put in down absolute value of minus 5, absolute value of 3, and so this is the maximum of these two is 5, and so m is equal to 6. Therefore, all solution, all the low of p lies in the interval from minus 6 to 6. Now, where are they located now? Let's use a calculator to help us to estimate. So in this case, I have a table and where I get this table come from is I can use a calculator. Let me show my calculator first. I'm going to do the mode table and I input the formula which is x cube of x cube move down minus 5x plus 3 then starting point will be minus 6 end point is 6 and the step is 1 and so I got a table of the value so I can transfer this table of value into the table now now after I got this result really I'm going to use another theorem called the intermediate value theorem. Since I know that px is a polynomial, right? px is a polynomial, so it is continuous. And this is necessary because the statement of Intermediate value theorem say that let's go to intermediate value theorem. If f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, and k is any number in between f a and f b, then there is a number c such that f c is equal k and c is an open interval from a to b. 
This is on page 143 of the weight balance text. And then, a special case, if FA and FB have opposite sign, special case. So suppose F is continuous on a close interval A to B, and FA and FB are opposite sign, say so one of them is positive, one of them negative, then there must be a C in open interval such that FC is equal to zero. So all we need now is look for A and B where they have opposite sign. Okay, let's go back to our table. You notice that there are a few values of where the PX have opposite sign. So between minus 3 and minus 2, PX have opposite sign. Between 0 and 1, PX have opposite sign, 1 positive, 1 negative. And Therefore, there is a zero from minus three to minus two, and there's a zero from three to minus one, and also the opposite sign from one to two. So, so Px is a polynomial as so it is continuous. Therefore, by the intermediate value theorem. Intermediate value theorem. So Px has a root, or zero in this case, between in this interval. Where the interval is <coughs> from minus 3 to minus 2, from 0 to 1, and from 1 to 2, because function has opposite sign at the end point eh? because the function has opposite sign for px here the px has opposite sign at, this, at the end point of this interval So that means that there are at least three zero now. So Px has at least three zero, three roots, three real zero, lying from minus six to six in this case. And then, since Px is polynomial, the degree of polynomial is, in this case is three. So we know that. Also, Px is a polynomial of degree 3. So, if this is a polynomial of degree 3, we can quote the theorem by fundamental theorem and algebra. We know that. P Px here cannot have more than 3 zero. So Px has at most 3 real roots. So now we can combine our finding. Px has the most 3 real root by fundamental theorem of algebra and Px has at least three roots by the intermediate value theorem. Therefore, we conclude. So, conclude that Px has exactly three roots now. Exactly three real roots. This concludes the solution.